Hello, welcome to Plastic Surgery 90210. I'm Ariel. And I'm Dr. Katzen. And we're here with our friend David, who lost so much weight. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Dave, coming from Rhode Island, actually in Rhode Island now. And I've been through a huge weight loss journey. And during this journey, I was able to meet up with Dr. Katzen and Ariel and everyone on the team. That's where the journey practically ends. But there was a long story before that. But basically, I've been big my entire life. And now life is very different because obviously that's not the case. So how big were you? What was your maximum? My maximum weight was 542 pounds. He has a picture of that. You want to show yeah. us? Yes. A uh, blast this, from the past. A blast from the past for sure. Do you hear? That's yeah. crazy. I look very happy. I have a lot of before pictures, a lot of after pictures that are preparing for our call. I'm sure people want to see it. Always what motivated me was seeing a lot of before and after pictures. That's amazing. So you went from there and then what happened? So originally what I had done about 10 years ago, I tried the gastric sleeve leave surgery after just so many years of throwing it aside and being like, no, I don't want to do it. It sounds risky. They had a lot of issues. And so it kind of turned me off. I, even though the surgeries were different, I just had a bad taste in my mouth. So I was just throwing it off, not doing anything about it. And then one day I was like, I need to do this. I wasn't sleeping very well. I had a CPAP machine. I needed it. It was like the best thing I've ever gotten was the CPAP machine. It pretty much saved my life. I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. And so I got it done. And before I couldn't find a scale to weigh myself. So I had to go look for one. I tried to get one that was 400 pound capacity. It didn't work. Oh my God, I'm above 400. It was forever since I weighed myself. So what I did was I, I went for a 600 pound scale and I was like, there's just no way I'm going to be that close to it. And so when I went on and I saw 542 pounds, I broke down. You always see those shows like my 600 pound life, this and that. I can be on that show. Me, I can't even believe that. Bearing myself to this and it was just a wake up call for me. And then I decided to do it. And then after I had done it, I lost about 90 pounds and went down. I gained a little weight and it was probably about 75, 80 pounds total. And I just kind of sat there for a while. I think originally my doctor recommended doing the bypass because it's a little more abrasive or a little more permanent, I guess. Less I absorption and friction. And so I was just like, no, I, I think the sleeve is less crazy sounding to me. I went with that. It was good because I was able to lose weight, but I knew it wasn't going to be the end of my journey. So I went eight years without losing any more weight. And I was really frustrated. And I decided, you know what, I'm going to get the bypass. I decided to go for the bypass. And that was a big difference for me when it came to eating. And even shortly after that, a couple months after I realized I had a lot of pains and I had gallstones. So I had to get my gallbladder removed. That helped on top of it because I could not even pass by a fast food joint without feeling sick and smelling it. And all of that was a big turnoff for me. It's like my life completely changed from that point. I ended up dropping a lot of weight pretty fast. My goal was like 250. I ended up surpassing that. Okay, now I have all the skin. I've been watching Dr. Katzen for years on YouTube and I was like, oh, this is the guy I want to go to. So give you guys a call and that's everything from there. And that's long story short because obviously you lived through this. I'm yeah. taking a couple steps back. What was your mental health before you stepped on that scale and realized your weight and after? I would say before mental health was just really at its worst. I couldn't do anything. It was so tough because friends would be like, let's go celebrate this. Let's go do that. And I remember the first thing I would do is like Google this, the places and see if they had booths. If they had booths, I would like fake a sickness. It was such a terrible way to live your life. And I was like, I can't do this anymore. You know, I can't. I'm missing out on all these opportunities with people and the people I love in my life and all that. And I got to do something about it. And it came down to just not capable of doing anything. Someone needed help lifting something. Someone needed help. I have friends that moved and like, hey, can you come help? There's just no way. I can't even lift myself up, let alone other things. So it was just such a terrible, dark place to be. I needed to do something about it. After getting on that scale, it was just so clear that it got out of hand. In my head, I thought it was maybe 400 pounds. And I thought 400 it was crazy. I was like, oh my gosh, if I see four, I'm going to freak out. When mm -hmm. I saw 540, I'm like, oh my God. And did the people around you, your friends and family, know that you were going through those internal struggles at that time too? The only people that probably knew, maybe my best friend and my mom, she tells me, she's like, oh, I regret giving you those juice bottles when you were young and this and that. And she like, always followed my weight. I always said, I would love for you to lose weight. The only one that kind of pushed me to ever do it really was my mom. So she knew because I would tell her how much I went through and all the, the pain I went through. And I didn't really talk to too many other people about it because I was ashamed and I was able to talk to my best friend and my mom about it because I could trust them. So they were the only two people that really knew the pain I was going through. No one else really that uh -huh. I was going through any kind of pain. And that's actually a really common story for people who are overweight to struggle by themselves or just maybe with one close family member or friend. But it's insane how much it's on your mind when you're battling something like this. The yeah. fact that you had to Google youths before going on restaurants, we hear that a lot. That's such a sad way to have to live. Yeah, and it's every day too. You don't even realize that's why life is so different right now because you don't even realize before how every single thing you do even when you're not awake is affected by your weight i would wake up i would fall asleep without my cpap
that mask on accident or something. I'm on my phone. I forget and I fall asleep or you really feel it the next day. You wake up in pain. You mm. wake up trying to get out of bed because it's just so hard. You can't fit into the right clothes. You worry about getting in your car, going to wherever you're going, being comfortable where you're at, going to the bathroom, taking a shower, every single thing you do. Not one thing is not affected by your weight. That's why it's when it is everything that is affecting you. When you don't have to deal with that anymore in your life, I still feel like I'm dreaming, honestly. That's so cool. Yes. Another one. This is the right before the sleeve. I had to actually lose 40 pounds on my own too. So I'm actually 40 pounds lighter than my biggest year. It's just me going through the whole process of figuring out what's going to be done. And oh, a CPAP test. Okay. So I went to go see my favorite band and I just looked at this picture and oh my gosh, another eye opener for me. It was just crazy to see. Who's um, the band? Reliant K, Christian rock band. Actually. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I saw them afterwards when I had lost some weight. I want to do like the same cool. position and everything just to do like a before and after cool. on yeah. the plane. This is actually after I lost some weight too, but this was my plane ride all the time. And now what's so great, I don't have the picture on me, but there was a new picture I took where I'm just sitting down. I have my table down. I have a laptop out of my phone on my lap, you know, just a drink. And it's just so great. Great. I would always be afraid to fly too. It was like every big guys and girls worst nightmares I have to get on the plane and deal with people next to you and stuff. This was me when I was younger. You can see you know, I was always chubby my whole life. And this was a before and after picture that's kind of a popular one posted on my Instagram. And there was a lot of attention on it. And you had mentioned what we talked last time that there were moments where even you were at a theme park and the ride wouldn't close down. Could you tell us about that story? So there were a lot of moments in my life, especially when I was young, where it was very traumatizing because of the situations that happened because of my obesity. And one of the big ones for me was I grew up in California in high school. I had come out to Rhode Island uh, to be near my Boston family. And we went to Six Flags. It's like our favorite thing. My friends and I used to go twice every week. I went back and I went on one of my favorite rides and went up to the line and I realized I couldn't close it. And I'm like, oh, maybe they can just push it down and help me out with it or something. And they tried and just wouldn't close. And they were like, yeah, you got to get off. And the amount of people that looked at me after and all that, it was so traumatizing for me being in like eighth grade or ninth grade. I wanted to leave. I wanted to just shut down. And I mean, you think that would be motivating enough to go through this weight loss journey at that time. And I think because how it made me feel and how it brought me down so much, I couldn't even get out of that. So, and I know a lot of people that suffer with weight uh, issues, they go through situations like that and you would think that'd be enough for them, but sometimes it takes something else. That for me was very traumatizing. That's so sad. And the crazy thing is that we hear that story kind yeah. of a lot. I feel like also when you're struggling with something, something traumatizing like that will traumatize you and it will affect you and you'll probably think about it every day. It doesn't necessarily mean it's enough. Sometimes you could fall deeper into it, deep into depression yeah. because of how you just feel like you're too far down to even come back up. The biggest thing that held me back, I tell people this all the time, is, is the loss of hope. You look at yourself at here, there's no way, even if I did lose weight, there's no way I can get to a point where I'm happy with my body or a lot of things that held me back. Maybe I lose a lot of weight and it would be really hard if I can even do that, but I'd have like a ton of skin left and I'd just be unhappy anyways. There's just no way. If I saw myself now, I'd be like, there's no way I can get to that point. So you right. lose hope. You just don't think it's possible. And this is why I want to tell as many people as I can, because even if you're at 542, which I knew no one at that weight, no one even close to that weight. I don't, and I had a lot of big friends. I still do. And no one was even close to that weight. If you can get to that point, you can get to where I'm at now. 175 is my current weight. If you could go back in time and tell Dave on the left of the screen something, what would you tell him? First thing I would say is that it's possible. Again, I really feel like people just, they don't do it because they don't think it's possible. The hope thing is just such a huge aspect of all of it. And if I could show him a picture of how things are now and tell him how life is now and that you didn't have to waste all that time emotional thinking about it. You have one life. You're losing all this time being unhappy. Like do something about it now. And I promise it'll completely change. Life will be so much better. And that was sort of the break point where you're like, oh, okay, you know, I'm gonna do something about this weight, I'm gonna get rid of the weight. And then phase two or part two, when you lost all the weight, had the extra skin, was there any point where you're like, okay, that's it, I'm getting rid of the skin now? Or was it sort of like a gradual kind of, I know I'm gonna to have to get rid of the skin as time goes on? I think as I was losing the weight, I knew when I started to see the skin, kind of sagging a bit. I was able to tuck in and like still look good with the clothes on and look better than I was before, obviously. But I knew then while I was losing the weight that I was going to do something about it that I had followed your YouTube channel. And I was like, this is my goal. And it was such a like, good thing for me to it helped me push further in my weight loss because I knew there was something to go for in the end. There was like a next big step. Of course, when it comes to surgery, you're afraid of so many things. Financial is another thing, but pain, I think, is the big one, you know, for people. It's like, oh, I don't want to go through that. And for me now, after everything I've been through, I'm pain. That's nothing like I'll take 
anything, just throw it at me. I knew kind of like during the weight loss that I was going to be doing it. And I feel like you were able to mentally prepare yourself as best as possible by watching those videos, by knowing exactly what to expect. And yeah. for many people, they make the pain as bad as possible in their heads. And then when they're going through it, I mean, of course, pain yeah, subject. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. looking back at it, people are always like, okay, actually, I thought it was going to be a lot worse. And, and again, even though as bad as it had gotten, at certain points, I would do it all again, 100%. Because when you live the way I'm living now compared to before, I don't care what pain I go through. This is so good. Life is so good. Everything is so good. You would do it all again if you could. I can't imagine anyone regretting it. So I think a lot of people throw up pain as a blocker to have these surgeries. You know, oh, I don't want to have the pain, so I'm not going to have the surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. And that's their defense mechanism because maybe they're scared about something else or maybe it's another issue. But pain is a tangible thing that you can say, yep, everyone does have some pain during this procedure. And it, it's temporary, you know, and now I can live permanently like this, you know, as long as I upkeep it. That to me is like a no brainer. Are know? there any of Dr. Katzen's videos in particular that kind of stuck with you back then? Yeah, mostly. So the two types of surgery I had gone through, the first one was the uh, circumferential body lift and the medial thigh lift. And so that was like one thing I knew I wanted to do. So I watched a lot of videos like that. Um, and then I realized upper body, the man boobs are a big thing. Like a lot of men don't like that uh -huh. under arms. And I'm like, okay, that was the next step. And I knew I was going to do that. But before before I had gotten each surgery, I had watched a lot of videos on those things specifically. And there was one video and I forget the individual was a younger guy. Was so I think that was a great one because uh, you want to see people that you can relate to. There was a lot of like know, older women and stuff like that too, which was really inspirational, but you kind of want to watch someone that's like at your age range and your you know, body type and all that stuff and hear their stories. I think that's what's like, really going to inspire someone or a group of people. So it's good that that you guys are doing it with that, that many different groups of people, because I think you can just reach out to everyone. And, and as long as someone can relate to the story a little bit, it's going to be an inspiration for them. Yeah, absolutely. So you said your life has gotten a whole lot better now. What about your love life? What about going out in public? Like I'll, I'll just say love life in general is 10 times better. And I think it's like just expected. You're much more comfortable. So I think you, you carry this certain confidence that people find attractive, of course, as long as you're not talking arrogant and all that stuff. Like, not to get too off topic, but I think a part of me, when I regret all this time I had been overweight, there's a part of me that appreciates it because I feel like it's almost like I needed to go through it. Like it humbled me in a way. Maybe I would have been different if I was in a body that I am in now from the beginning. That's one way you to look at it, at least. Everyone should look at it that way. But that's me pulling the positive out of it. Yeah, yeah. love life's great. Friendship, you carry yourself differently and being more confident and being more open and being out there more, not hiding in your room, being like, I can't fit anywhere. You see more people, you interact with more people. It teaches you more social skills because of that. And you can inspire people. And for me, it's everything changes. Social life changes completely as well. There are things that happen when I'm with my brother or you know, specifically, it always seems to happen with my brother, but we would go out to eat. I'd go through a drive through and I'll get a drink and he'll get something to eat. And they'll be like, oh, it's all set. They'll pay for it. Or the person in front of me would get it. And I'm like, that stuff never happened to me before. Or if I go to a restaurant, the people take care of bills for you. You start to think, is it because of how you look now? And it never happened to me before? Like, is there a coincidence there? I don't know. So for me, everything's changed, not just in my own life, the people around me too, that I used to socialize with before and that I socialize with now. Everything's great. That's awesome. You're getting things taken care of now. Now that's so cool. <laughs> I never get free drinks in a drive-thru. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I mean, now, could you explain how you were treated before versus now? Yeah, I think uh, such a life subject too, because for me, I always thought if I applied for a job or I didn't get a job, I think when people look at someone like this, they're just going to assume I'm not capable of a lot of things. I think it's okay to assume that. It's like what I would tell old David too, is you can really, the amount you can accomplish from losing a lot of weight, it's not because of how, just how people treat you, but it's because of like what you're capable of doing too. And you know? People recognize that and they know that, you know, when they see you at this weight and you're trying to apply for a job, there's obvious reasons why they might think you're not capable. In that sense, even if you're very capable of the job, people didn't really take you seriously because they saw that you didn't really take care of yourself seriously, I think. No, that's my assumption, at least. I mean, it makes sense to me. And whenever I had applied for jobs in the past, it was really tough. And this time around in the past year, or I was looking for a few positions, just part time positions. It was just like, all left and right because of my profile, LinkedIn, and all those photos had changed and I didn't look like this. Like, and I don't know if that's something I should be sad about or happy about. 
because no one should be treated that way. And that's another thing we hear a lot too from people who have lost a lot of weight is they say that when they were bigger, people just assumed they were lazy. It's, it's sad. Yeah. It's not fair. And we didn't want to be lazy, but some, when you're at that weight and you're carrying around 400 something pounds more than you should be, I mean, you can't help but to be lazy. I was always an entrepreneur, a go-getter, even at this weight. And there was so much I couldn't do, not because I didn't want to, but because I physically couldn't. So it just wasn't fair to myself. And then it all goes hand in hand because like we were talking about with confidence and everything too, your confidence now going into these interviews must be just so different from before. Definitely. Not only because of how I look, but it's because I know that I'll be physically capable of doing a lot of things and I won't be letting anyone else down, let alone letting myself down. And when you go out, if you bump into a young Dave like we have on the left, would you be inclined to go up to him and say, hey, I was in your shoes, you can <laughs> do it too? Or yeah. would you rather just not make waves and don't influence yeah. that person? I'm kind of in the middle because if someone had done that to me, a part of me might take offense. I look for that moment. Sometimes if they're like, oh, yeah. some people will say it out loud. Like they try to fit into clothing at a clothing store and they're like, oh, I'm too big. And I'm just like, ah, oh, no, I totally hear you. And they're like, oh yeah, okay. And I'm like, no, and I'll show you and I'll have pictures ready. Any chance I can to inspire someone, I'll do it now. And they're like, oh my God, you know? And so and then we get in this whole conversation. They're, I'm talking about my whole story and everything like that. And they, they leave with a smile and hopefully they leave with that motivation and that, that, and that hope that things can actually right. change for them. Because my weight and my story is always the most drastic. No matter who I show, there's no one that weighed more than me. So, okay, if he can do it, then. Yeah. yeah you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Have you made friends through that, through these people that that have been so inspired by you? Yeah, definitely. So I'm like a big time gamer. I don't know if you can tell from my background, but there, yeah. there were a lot of people that I played with online. We all together struggled with weight issues and some new ones I had met telling them about everything. It was such a huge inspiration for them. And the new people that I met, now we contact each other all the time. I'm sending them recipes of like stuff that I make and this and that. And it's really cool to have that connection. That's really awesome. Yeah. So you had the weight. You got rid of the weight, you had the plastic surgery, you crushed that. What's your next battle? What are you going to do next? What my siblings call my final form. It's like a Pokemon reference. It's like my final evolve. It's basically <laughs> to gain enough weight to be enough muscle weight to be a body that I'm comfortable with and very capable. If I need to, right now, I lost a lot of muscle in the process. And for me, being able to lift things up and do all that is part of the whole final plan. You really appreciate it. I lost a lot of weight, but now the final step is to gain that muscle. So I have yeah. this like tonal machine behind me, which I've been using. I need to use it more often now, but now that I've made time for it, it's been super effective so far. I know muscle takes a lot longer to build, but I see like little pumps that weren't there before. It's where before it was like, my arms were so thin here, this level up here. It's like, it got really bad at one point. I'm like, all right, I need to do something about it. But I think that would be the final step for me. It's just to gain muscle. Well, we can't wait to see you through that process. Oh yeah, I'll definitely be letting you guys know all about it. Did you go to a theme park after your skin removal surgery? Yeah, it was last exactly. November, though, not too long ago. And and I hadn't gone to a theme park since that event in eighth grade, ninth grade or something like that. I just hit 40 this year. So this is like the moment I've been waiting for because I loved roller coaster rides. And when I was big, it was like the big thing I talked about was, oh, when I can go on a roller coaster ride again, I'd be so happy. And it was fun. It was a little nutty because I was bounced around a lot, you know, when you're a lot thinner. So you got to hold on a lot tighter. Ended up getting like a little bit sick, but not too oh, bad. No. But it was worth it. <laughs> to me, it was flags? just... Yeah, it was Six Flags in, in right. California, yeah. Wow. Um, so in awesome, some though. ways, that you really came full circle then. Definitely. I was able... The, the moment was going on that that Batman ride that I couldn't go on when I was younger. That to me was just like, when I got off that ride, I was like, oh my God, I did it. That is awesome. Let's talk a little bit more about the surgery with Dr. Katzen. So we first did the lower body lift with the thighs. Do you remember how much weight we removed? That first one was, I think the most, I wanted to say it was in the high twenties. I remember before, I must have asked you so many times, I don't know. Like that was the big thing for me before. I was like, all right, I wanna know how much weight was taken off. Cause I'd see the videos before and 12 pounds, you know, 14 pounds was like a big number. And I was like 15 pounds, like, oh, oh man, if I can get that high. And when I heard 28 pounds, I was shocked. I was just checking your papers and I did a double take like 28. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah that's I don't know if that's normal, but to me it was like, wow, it's a that's lot higher high. than me. So that's incredible. And that just shows how much you've shrunk. He did some stuff, but you did that. I went and through all the pain. No, I'm just kidding. Next surgery was your top surgery, which was, was it the horizontal torsoplasty as well as the chest reduction and then the arm lift? Yeah. yeah. And we removed eight pounds from that. So usually that's excess skin, uh, usually not a lot of excess fat, but that's three areas. That's the arms, 
the chest and then the back. So three different areas. So that's a lot of skin taken off. And it's insane how small you are under all that skin, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Like I can understand why you lose a lot of muscle in the process because in order to carry around this weight, you need to have that muscle. There's like no way you can do it. Thinking the amount of weight I had lost, 370 pounds, or I cannot even carry half that in my arm. To think that I was carrying around all the weight, it's incredible. That is crazy. But like backwards in our heads, because you wouldn't think that bigger people are so strong. Or, but you also, they don't get a chance to show it off because they're just carrying their weight around. Have you noticed a difference in your feet when you walk or anything? Your knees maybe? Yeah, you know, one of the big things for me was learning how to walk again. It's like being a baby because you're used to that weight pulling you forward. I would like walk around with a hunch. I would try to stand up straight and walk like a normal person, but I would lose balance because you're used to that weight being pulling you forward. Now, of course, you're like in the bed for a while while you're healing. You got to relearn how to do a lot of things and standing up and all that. But yeah, learning how to walk again was like an actual thing. That was pretty crazy. Interesting. I can't imagine having to relearn how to walk in your late 30s. <laughs> I know, right? And you also mentioned that a lot of your friends have been inspired by your story and have kind of started their own weight loss journeys. Can you talk about that? Yeah, I have a lot of friends that are uh, larger and a lot of them now, since I had lost the weight, a lot of them have decided they're going to go for the stomach surgery. And that was like one thing that they had been thinking about for a long time. And because of what I told them, I'd like to think that's why, but they ask me questions all the time about it. So I'm hoping uh, I had inspired them in some way. They're deciding to go through it. And to me, I'm like so happy. I'm like, tell me everything about it. I want you to keep me in the loop. Like I will help any way I can. I'm so happy to see that because it's a pandemic in the US. It's crazy. You know, how many people suffer with obesity and how much it's held us back from doing the things we want to do and stuff. And I see it and now. I notice it so much more than before because I have to worry about myself, my own suffering. And now I see other people suffering with it. And I'm like, man, I wish I can just get in their head and tell them you should do this. You should do it. I'm telling yeah. you, you'll love it. It's not easy, but it's worth it. That's amazing that your friends, you help them to take that step towards yeah. their better health. I sure hope so. Yeah. But yes. having support from someone, especially someone who's been through it, means everything is, as you might know. Like, you probably wish you had someone that could have been like you while you yeah. were going through all of that. And that's why I turned to YouTube and I found Dr. Katz and stuff. Those were the people that really inspired me because like I said, everyone in my life that was bigger, they weren't really doing anything about it either. Which one of us are going to change our lives first? I had to watch other people go through it and YouTube helped a lot with that. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, it's great that that video platform can now just be so educational and literally turn lives around. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Because, you know, there are doctors and nurses and all this medical talk, but sometimes it takes a video for you to identify with another going, oh, that's me. That could be me. I want to be like that. And that's yeah. a video. A lot of healthcare professionals, they don't do that because they're busy with their clinical work and that's fine. But it's kind of cool that a YouTube video can change someone's life like this. And when I was younger, we didn't have any of that. And Dr. Katzen, you were one of the first, if not the first plastic surgeons to jump on the video YouTube platform and really film your surgeries and explain to people what's going on in surgery. Why was that so important to you? Oh, I think plastic surgery is a very visual platform. We have the before and after pictures and that's very educational for pa uh, patients, but patients want more. They mm -hmm. want to see more. So I always thought, you know, if we could video the procedures, then they can exactly see what was going on. More of an educational kind of thing. How do you suture the muscle up? How do you pull the skin down? How do you do the belly button? Well, here's my video and this is how we do it. So it was more of an educational platform. And then it just became a platform that everyone uses, not just before and after pictures. Now it's videos and now it's evolved to consultations through video chat platforms to diagnosing. You know, that was just the beginning. So I think uh, video is a very good platform for education, helps people to understand what's going on. Yeah, that's the whole reason why I went through with it, because I had those questions too. Like, how do you do this? How do you do that? I want to know how it's done, you know, in order for me to agree to something like this. And when I watched that whole thing, I was like, OK, now I know I'm going to do it. Yeah, so it's cool. So, you know, some of my patients come in and so you're thinking about a tummy tuck. They're like, yep, I watched all your videos. I know exactly what I'm getting into. I want to do it. I don't know to have any questions because I watched all your videos. What's the price and where do I sign? And in my head, I thought no matter the cost anyways, this is something that's going to change my life. To me, it's worth so much more than what I paid. Let's just say that. That's the mentality you should go into it with because once you realize how much your life changes, there's just no price to it. That's awesome. Cool. So now I'm going to ask you what your message is to people in different stages. So what is your main message to people struggling with obesity? My main message is, I guess the question is, how much do you love yourself? <laughs> that's a big one because you really got to get to a point where you want to do it. You know, you want to change your life because you believe in yourself 
yourself, you love yourself. And I mean to say that in a conceited way. It's a personal level of love, it's not love yourself, like look in the mirror, love yourself all the time. It's like, how much do you love yourself and how much do you love the people around you? Because you want to be good for them too, right? I know there's a lot of parents that struggle with obesity and they want to be able to help their kids. Sometimes if you don't love yourself enough, but you love someone else, so much you're almost doing it for them think about it that way but um you really got to get a point in your life you love yourself enough to do it that's the one thing the other thing is the big thing i always turn to is there is hope and it is possible 100 percent i mean you can weigh more than i did and get to where i'm at so hopefully there's a lot of people i know that struggle with what i did which was just the loss of hope and if that's enough to inspire you to do it then so be it they just thought it was just not possible there's 100% chance for you to get to where you want to be no matter what. You know, you don't even have to go through stomach surgery if you really didn't want to. It's definitely a really great tool because it limits you in ways that if you do screw up, pulls you back to where if you didn't have it and you screw up, it's a more of a struggle. So if you lost weight normally and you realize you had a lot of skin, you want to get it removed, that's a possibility too. But, you know, I just tell people like, don't lose hope. And if you're at that weight, you're unhappy, which I think most people will admit it, is to just, yeah, not lose hope. After my initial weight loss, you know, so still uh, it was 430 something, I believe trying to find a suit, really expensive suit because they really in big and tall stores, they know how much you really need to buy clothing. So they rack up the prices a lot. That's another benefit. When you're a lot thinner, you can shop a lot better and a lot cheaper because there are just more options and technically there's less material. So it costs less. I love how you tag these pictures. This picture looks like you're almost taking a picture of yourself. And the other picture looked like you were opening the door and seeing old Dave as you entered the room. So, oh, that was so artistic. Yeah. I always think about that. And when I went, yeah, the new newer pictures when I went to my sister's wedding. It was just so great to be able to fit. I really have to hold back from shopping. It's really tough for me to, to not go somewhere and buy a piece of clothing now. You wonder because if you went to your sister's wedding, there must have been a lot of people that haven't seen you in a while. And oh what, my gosh. what was that reaction like? I tried not to take the moment away from her, but I told her, I even went up to her like, I'm sorry. And all these people are coming up to me and stuff. They're all just amazed by it. That's how it is now. And there are still people in my life that I haven't seen for a while that I'm so excited to see because they didn't see me. Just various before and afters. Here's another one, the mirror shots. It's one of me and my mom. I have a really great picture of after of me and my mom, because for me, she had lost some weight too. I had inspired her. She inspired me and then I re-inspired her. Cause Aww. we both kind of struggled wow. with weight loss. <laughs> wow, yeah, so. you guys both just shrunk. So from that to that. That's incredible. Yeah. Very cool. You guys both look so healthy and happy. Happy is it, the main thing. Definitely. And I still dream where I'm big in my dreams. I don't know if that's ever gonna change and I hope it does one day. That doesn't matter because I'm living the real thing. Cool. You know, you go like 40 years being big. I think it's hard to imagine anything otherwise. Yeah, that's so. true. And we hear that all the time. Oh, yeah. It'll catch up to you soon, I hope. And you'll you'll realize that this is who you are in your yep. dreams and awake. Exactly. Yes. One well, thing I did recently, too, actually, was from as long as I remember, even when I was young, I told my mom I didn't want to do it, but I had never gone or taken my shirt off at a pool or a beach. And so recently I had gone to the beach, went to Florida. I had taken my shirt off and I got a picture of it, which I would never cool. normally show people. I had a picture snapped of me, actually, and I didn't know about it, but it was sent to me. And it took so much for me to take my shirt off. It really did. And, you know, part of me is like, oh, I'm never going to see these people anyway, so why not? Yeah. But I actually felt comfortable. Awesome. It was great. I have some other ones too. Let me see some afters. Mirror shots. When you pass by the mirror and you're like, oh my God, I don't even recognize me. And you decide to take a picture. It's crazy. I got really burnt. You look great. So great catching up with you, Dave. And if you're down in LA, please drop by. I will. Thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dave. And I'm glad you're doing so well and brand new life and keep on living the dream. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. And thanks for choosing us. Do you have any more after photos? I went to this lake by my house that I used to love to go to. And it is huge. And I was able to actually walk the whole thing, which of course I wasn't able. That was a lot of fun. This was my trip to BlizzCon. I had met a pretty famous streamer. I was able to buy the clothes at BlizzCon. You know, I was never able to do that before in the previous yeah. year. So. That to me was really fun. Another mirror shot where I was like, wow, this is great. I was able to fit in these clothes, you know, that I've always wanted to wear. Uh -huh. Yeah, me awesome. trying on clothes, being super happy about it. Isn't it hard not to shop? <laughs> I know. That's the thing. To me, I'm just, it's something that people don't even think about getting in your car and fitting in behind your steering wheel. Like everyone can do that. But when you're someone that's been big your whole life and you can do that comfortably for the first time, wear your safety belt comfortably for the first time, that's just something, it's weird to think it's something you would appreciate so much while yeah. most people are just every day to them. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like that's the most like eye opening and also humbling hearing all these stories. You know, it's interesting for you too, because you don't look like someone who's ever been big. Now, I would have never thought you struggled with your weight. The thought wouldn't be in my head. 
And you know, honestly, I have to admit it's because of the surgeries with Dr. Katz. And that's really because when you lose a lot of weight and you see a lot of skin, unless you tuck it right, they're like, oh yeah, I can tell you probably lost some weight, this and that. At that point, I remember thinking, well, I hope with the skin surgery, it's going to really look like I was never big. And when I healed up from it and all that stuff, I got the same comment that you gave me like, oh, I would have never guessed. It's such a good thing to hear. Not because it's that feeling of being ashamed or what you've come from and all that, but it's just confirmation, I guess. It's just good to hear it. No, absolutely. And I think that, of course, there's nothing wrong. It's beautiful. The fact that you're so camouflaged now, you just totally blend in. But actually, you're even more fit and more lean than majority of Americans now, which is also crazy. Yeah. And like I said, my goal was 250. And I know 250 is still considered big. But coming from 540, I was like 250. I would be so happy. The truth is, I probably would have been a lot happier there because I saw what it was doing for me in my life. I started to set even more realistic goal and it motivated me so much. Getting to that 250 point motivated me to go further and to get where I'm at now. That's all it took, really. What was it like for you when you when you saw the hundreds pop up on your scale? Getting in the twos was huge. When I saw the ones, took a picture, sent it to all my loved ones. I'm like, this is it. That was like at the point of like, I made it. Last time I was in the ones, I was like before high school. It was crazy. Right. Yeah. And when did you hit the hundreds? I would say a few months after my second surgery, I believe. I think I went into second part of my surgery, which was the top. I want to say I was in the mid twos. And so I would say a few months after because I was still pushing, even though I was a little bit bedridden, you know, healing up and this and that. I still carried the two dumbbells with me, watched what I ate and all that stuff, drank a lot of water, and then I was still able to lose weight after that. That's incredible. That's crazy how much weight you still lost after your skin removal surgery. Yeah. What a journey. It's amazing. I still can't believe it. Pinch me. You know, there's certain things you think about after the whole adventure. Are there any other parts of your body you want to touch up or do or this and that? I'm so happy where I'm at now that if you get skin surgery done when you're not at your goal or sometimes well, you'll have a little bit of extra skin. So I always tell people get to where you know you're ready for it and you're not getting it too early. So you're not like losing a ton of weight after you get the skin surgery. I'm worth mentioning, but I just figured I would. For me, it's something that, you know, after my first surgery with Dr. Katz and I had lost a fairly good amount after where there are certain areas where I'm like, oh, maybe I'll go back in my head. I'm like, never going to anyone else. So if I do decide to do something, it will definitely be with Dr. Katz. Awesome. You've been with him for two major, major surgeries and your experience has been all good? All of it. Every single bit. People are like, are you sure? What about this? What about that? I'm like, no. From going in to dealing with everyone there, super nice. The whole team is amazing. I love everyone. There's not one person I can complain about. Going to the recovery room, to being taken care of there, to the follow-ups after. It was just perfect. Awesome. Well, that's so nice to hear. What made you decide to show your face and do all of this? So, because I know we were blurring out your face for a while. I still watch the video of the surgery and it's like so revealing to me. And I'm like, oh my God, like if anyone saw me, if anyone saw who the face, part of me thought like, that's the old you, Dave. You need to get over it. You should be happy where you're at now. And as long as you're truly happy where you're at now, then who cares what you look like before? Who cares about right. all that stuff? I think the major reason why I decided, oh, I'm going to show my face is because a lot of the videos that I watched from Dr. Katzen where the face was blurred out, it felt so different than the ones that I could see the person's face. It was so much more inspirational for me being able to see their expressions and being able to see their whole self and their excitement and their happiness in their face because you can't really tell by the body how happy they really are. That was so inspirational for me. I'm like, okay, if I can inspire someone that way by showing my face, I'll just drop all my insecurities. I'll do it. Let's just do it. You know, get it over with. Well, thank you for doing that. And also I can relate to that so much because looking into someone's eyes or even seeing their smile, it's such a difference. You just are able to connect to their souls, really. It was a no-brainer for me after realizing that. And you even created a TikTok account where you've been showing people what you're going through too. Yeah, I had made one post and it had a, like a ton of views and I didn't even try pushing. One thing I had done, almost nobody has seen it yet, but I have a lot of before videos. A lot of videos, like one video of me trying to fit in my car. You know, I was really big and just sit there super depressed because it was like a real life play of how my life was right. and then the camera would cut because I knew I was going to do this at that time and one day I'm going to do an after video and this year is when I'm going to be doing all the after videos. I have so many videos that are before videos and I can't wait to start making the afters now and, and oh posting them on the TikTok. One, I can't wait to see those. <laughs> the fact that you knew to record those back then is so awesome. Like you knew that you were going to get there so you were confident to make those videos. This is the last time I'm going to be on video getting into the car like this. Exactly. Really cool. It's just something ticked in my head. I was like, this is it. I'm going to do 
it. That's awesome. And it kind of holds you accountable to make sure that you're able to do that yeah. after. <laughs> yeah, so I'm not sitting on these old videos for nothing. That's awesome. I can't wait to see those. I'm sure that'll inspire so many people because every video I see that's a weight loss video inspires me. I can make a better choice today. And that's yep. kind of what we need is like we see so much of everything else going on in the world. It's so nice to see some inspiration, especially when it's your authentic and it's someone has lived through and they're sharing with you. Exactly. Like I said, when Dr. Katzen had asked, you know, do you see when you see people struggling with weight, do you go up to them? And for me, it's more like I want to share everything I've been through to people who want to see it. You know, I don't want to ever force it onto someone because yeah. I know there's certain times in your life where you're just like, you know what to do. You don't want to hear it else you're getting pestered enough. I'd rather reach out to people and show them what I've been through for people that are interested in it. So that's why instead of keeping it all to myself, not telling anyone and not sharing these stories and not, I feel like it's like a waste. I have to tell the world my story because I know there are other people that are going to see it and hopefully be inspired like I was from the stories. That's amazing. And that's so true because it's very difficult to when you're just seeing someone in public to know where they're at with everything, trying to motivate someone to do anything. You know, if they're not in the right headspace for it, it's going to come off really wrong and it's probably going to even steer them in the wrong direction. Social media is a really good place for people who want this information to be able to reach out or dive deeper. I think that's a great choice. But like you said, if they kind of hint at something like, oh, I can't fit into this or I'm struggling with this, that's the perfect little kind of cry for help. Yeah, that's their cry for help. That's their like that's the moment where it's like the message just come to me like, Dave, you could do something about this, you know, just show them what you've been through, maybe hint it. If they don't, they show they're not interested, whatever, you walk away. But every time it's not been that. The case has been like, they're like, oh my God, tell me more about it. Yeah, that's so cool. You know, you've already been through so much and you're just helping the world now. You're giving back in some ways. That's really awesome. You're a good person for doing that. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you so much for doing this with us. I really think that this will be insightful to so many people. Even if it's someone struggling, just being a little overweight. I really think that hearing this from someone who's gone through such massive weight loss, it could inspire them a lot. I hope so. That would be wonderful. And I'd love to hear more about it too. And I always check the comments of Dr. Katzen's videos and stuff. You know, if this one's posted, I'd love to see the comments and see what people say. And of course, you'll get some comments that you might not want to see but to me that doesn't even affect me at this point it's more i love to see how it's affected someone because even in the videos i watched before dr katzen it wasn't the videos of my own surgeries or anything it was other people's but i'd love to see the response and i'd love to see them being oh my god this inspired me so much blah blah, blah. and it was so great to see those are always amazing and we get those every day we see those every day and then of course there are the people who just don't understand and they're like why did you even get yourself there in the first place and it's like you know if yeah. you don't understand we get it i don't yeah. expect them to understand why we got to where we we're at you know there's so many reasons why we did you know, people's reasons they're all different whether it's something tragic happened in their life and they turn to food as an addiction or they have a medical condition or this and that that question is kind of like a silly question but at the same time there's no point wasting energy getting mad about it You're like okay they don't understand that's fine but here's my story maybe you'll understand now exactly and i just wish people would be kinder practice empathy you know just show more love especially to see how far someone has come how could you possibly comment something negative on that video love and empathy are the two big things to show Oh, yeah, you have to do that. Inspire both sides, really. That's why I check the comments to see those two things specific. In Dr. Katzen's videos, there's a lot of them. So it's just really cool to see it. Yeah, I do feel like we have a good community on YouTube. Majority where people are like commenting really inspiring things. And it's cool because we have some subscribers that come back for every single video just to see whose life has been changed next. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Dave. Thank you for being here with us.